good afternoon good evening and uh, this is one more video about the notification of the mca dated 27th october this one pertains to designated persons the requirement for every company to have a designated person and the first thing that one starts with is what was the trigger for this notification everyone is aware that recently mc has been expressing concerns about um sbos significant beneficial owners mc has been sending notices to companies highlighting the provisions of section 90 dealing with significant beneficial owners particularly the communications have been going to those companies which have not declared any significant beneficial owner and because this particular notification which is coming in pursuance of section 89 and is coming as a part of the so-called mgt rules for spo there are separate rules spo rules this one is not an addition to spo rules but is connected with section 89 section 8990 are on and what you call interrelated matter though there is a difference between the two sections but the section pertain to <clears throat> a common bunch of sections and therefore the immediate reflection one has is that this change requiring companies to have a designated persons um, is some way connected with the mca's concern about companies not having identified sbos but as we read through this notification one wonders as to what is the connection between this section section 89 the notification under section 9 section 89 adding rule 9 of the mgt rules versus the requirement of companies to have sbos in terms of section 90 because what becomes very apparent is that even if the company has identified an sbo it would still need to comply with the requirement of having a designated person and for that matter if the company does not have an sbo even then the requirement of having a designated person will apply and that would mean the requirement of a designated person in terms of section 89 as per rule 9 of the so-called mgt rules is an overlap is an addition to the requirement of having sbos it's not either obviating the need for company to identify sbo nor is it uh, nor is it not applicable to companies which have identified sbos already so the need to identify a dp designated person so to say is an additionality what purpose does it serve what could be the intent We'll try to do some guesswork on what could probably be the purpose. But end of the day, you'll probably hear me saying that, well, one is not clear on what exactly could have been the motivation or what could probably be the intent of a designated designating a person. Who is this designated person, by the way? So let's first start by quickly a background of Section 90. And the reason why I said this might in a way be inspired by the gap gaps in SPO declaration by companies, which has been <coughs> reflected in several of the MCA communications to companies in the recent past. So if we refer to section 18, section 90 of the Companies Act, uh, we understand that section 90 requires companies to identify SBOs, but not every company needs to have an SBO at all. First of all, if the natural persons are directly holding shares in the company, they don't need to be notified because their name their names are already there on the register of members itself and there is no need for the natural holders directly holding share capital in the company to nominate themselves as sbos that's one important gap therefore if the shareholders being natural persons are already on the register of members there's no need for them to come forward and say that i am the sb they're they're actually uh, legal owners as well the need to declare SBOs comes when there are artificial entities, which could probably be a company, could be a partnership firm, could be an LLP, could be an HUF, could be a trust. Wherever there are entities other than natural persons holding 10% or more capital in the company. And behind the facade of such non-natural persons, there is a natural person. For example, between the target company and the natural person, there is an intermediary holding company. And that holding company in turn is held by natural person. In other words, there's a target company in which more than 10% capital is held by a company. 
In that company, natural person holds the majority control. Therefore, through the intermediary company, the natural person is holding more than 10% stake. It's an indirect stake. In a sense, section 90 focuses on indirect stake only. Direct stake held by natural persons does not need to be notified. So there could be two major reasons why there may not be an SBO in the company at all. A, because the, the natural persons are directly holding capital or because of a diversified capital base because 10% is the threshold for declaration as an SBO. If the number of holders is diverse and therefore none of the natural persons is indirectly holding 10% or more. Uh, it may be either solely or uh, acting in concert with connected persons. Therefore, diverse holding base, there again, there'll be no need for the declaration of an SPO. The result is that there are a whole lot of companies, not just meaning to talk about professionally managed companies uh, with very, very diverse shareholding base, but whole lot of other companies as well, which for a variety of reasons, basically falling among these two, have not declared SBOs at all. Now, if you look at the PMLA rules, because the entire uh, genesis of SBO declaration is coming from FATF requirements, which is reflected further in PMLA uh, rules in the country. FATF or PMLA rules basically say that either there is a natural person who comes forward and say that I am holding the range of control. I am the one holding control over the company and therefore I am the natural person. I mean, the idea basically is that every artificial entity must have some natural person who is holding the range of control. Somebody who's in the driver's seat. After all, a company is like an artificial entity. It has to be driven by a natural person. Who is that natural person? That's the SPO. So if the driving seat is taken by a natural person. That's the SBO. But PMLA rules actually go and say that either there is a natural person who is holding more than a stipulated percentage, for example, 10%, but normally SB rules talk about 20 or 25%. Either there is a natural person holding such controlling stake. However, if because of diversified base, the company does not have a natural person in the driving seat, then the KMP, and by the way, the word KMP includes directors as well. The KMP or KMP shall be deemed to be the SBO. So either a natural person holds a significant control or the KMP will be deemed to be the SBO. That's basically common in both FATF rules as also PML rules in the country. However, the way Section 90 was worded, uh, remember that the text of SBO rules under Section 90 underwent a significant change between the original proposal versus the actual enactment. There was a significant dilution of the provisions and therefore it's quite possible as is the case with a lot of companies. A lot of companies have not identified an SBO at all for the two reasons I had mentioned earlier. So is the MCA trying to therefore pin those companies which don't have SBOs and say that if you don't have an SBO, you still need a designated person. If that was the intent, I would say this is still a misfired shot. If that trigger was the fact that companies may not have identified or companies may not have been required to identify an SBO, the shot is still misfired. Why? Because this provision has come as a part of section 89. It should have actually come as a part of section 90. And the best way to fill up the gap would have been probably to do some tweaking in the SBO rules itself to say that if the company does not have an SBO, then one of the directors or one of, one of the KMPs or failing either of these in the CS will be taken as the SBO. But instead of doing, instead of naming such a person as SBO in terms of section 90, the rule makers have gone and inserted the rule in section 89. Section 89 and section 90, though might be related, but operate in a very different way. Section 90 comes in force when there is a layer or layers of entities through which natural persons are controlling the range of control. Like I mentioned earlier, target company, there's an intermediary company, intermediary companies through layers of entities and natural person is sitting somewhere above the layers. That is the intent of section 90. Section 89 operates in a very different way. Section 89 comes into play where there is a gap between the person legally holding shares and the person beneficially entitled to the shares. 
दैट वुड मीन लीगल ओनर कोई और है और एक्चुअल या बेनिफिशियल ओनर कोई और है जो ओनर ऑन रिकॉर्ड इज नॉट द ओनर रियली द रिकॉर्ड में जो ओनर है दैट्स द लीगल ओनर एक्चुअल बेनिफिशियरी वर्सेज फाइड्यूशरी द वन इज होल्डिंग द शेयर इज मियरली फाइड्यूशरी द वन इज एक्चुअली बेनिफिशियली एंटाइटल टू द शेयर इज अ बेनिफिशियरी एंड दट बेनिफिशियरी इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द फाइड्यूशरी दैट्स वेर सेक्शन एटी नाइन कम्स इन प्राइमरली सेक्शन एटी नाइन कम्स वेन देर आर फाइड्यूशरी होल्डिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल ट्रस्ट कैपेसिटी समटाइम्स इन कैपेसिटी ऑफ एन एच यू एफ एज वेल दीज आर इंस्टेंसिस वेर सेक्शन एटी नाइन कम्स इन टू प्ले सो एडिंग दिस प्रोविजन एज अ पार्ट ऑफ सेक्शन एटी नाइन does not carry the intent at all because like i mentioned earlier even if the company has an sbo it will still need a dp if the company does not have an sbo or is not required to have an sbo or the company has identified an sbo it will still need a dp what exactly will the dp do will it serve the purpose of an sbo will it serve will it will it probably have the same responsibilities as an sbo that's also not clear because that might have been clearer had this rule been added as a part of section 90 rules but that's not been done so the way it seems to be worded or the same it seems to be enacted one is left wondering <clears throat> while the requirement is there for every company remember i will talk about what is the requirement number one the requirement is applicable to everyone and the requirement is applicable immediately it applies to all companies <clears throat> big companies small companies public companies private companies whichever company it applies to all i think government company probably not but well as it stands it applies to all companies without exception and every such company shall identify a dp what will be the task of dp looking at the language of the section that section says the dp shall be responsible for furnishing information on beneficial interest once again looking at definition of beneficial interest in context of section 89 not in context of section 90 because section 90 covers indirect interest also section 89 is talking about beneficial interest so the context of section 89 the word beneficial interest means beneficial interest divorced from or different from legal interest so if there is any such gap between legal ownership and beneficial ownership that's where section 89 comes this dp is the one who is designated to answer questions on whether there is such beneficial interest in the holdings of the company so sawal ye uthta hai ki how will i if let's say i am a designated person how would i know whether my shareholders are actual shareholders or not how would i know whether my shareholders are actually fiduciaries or their beneficiaries if the fiduciary or beneficiary in question has notified the company of a gap between legal versus beneficial ownership the company would have anyway filed it with roc but if the beneficiary or the fiduciary does not notify there is no way by which the dp would come to know it and if the dp cannot inform or help the registrar in finding out facts which is not aware of couldn't have been aware of himself nevertheless as the law stands every company shall designate a dp whose task would be to furnish information on beneficial interest as defined in section 89 if the company does not who can be notified by the way who can be designated it may either be any of directors by the way the rule wrongly refers to word every director but i am prepared to i mean read it as every will actually be meant read as any director it may designate any director or may designate a kmp or may designate a cs what if the company does not designate if the company does not then in this sequence if the company has a cs the cs will be taken to be a dp if the company is not required to have a cs in that case the md or manager if the company neither have a md or manager in that case every director here the word is every earlier it should have actually been any instead of every nevertheless here the intent basically is that every director shall be deemed to be a dp if the company has not named one या तो आप किसी के सर पे मुकुट डाल दो कि तुम डीपी हो अगर आपने ऐसा ताज किसी के सर पे नहीं डाला तो हर डायरेक्टर विल बी टेकन टू बी डीपी मीनिंग इफ रिक्वायर्ड द पर्सन विल हैव टू असिस्ट रजिस्ट्रार इन फाइंडिंग रेलेवेंट डिटेल्स ऑफ बेनिफिशियल ओनरशिप नाउ कम्स द डिस्क्लोजर रिक्वायरमेंट्स 
Details of DP need to be disclosed as part of annual return. That would mean one more probably information going to be added as a part of uh, annual return. Uh, to that extent, there is a modification of MGT-7 as well. And this is applicable to annual returns filed for financial year 23-24 onwards. That would mean from next year onwards, the requirement will be there. If the DP changes, they'll be need to intimate the ROC in terms of GNL2. What will be the functions of DP? What will be the added responsibilities of the DP? Like I mentioned, from the reading of the rules currently, all we can say is that if there is an inquiry on beneficial ownership, the DP will be the will be the one responsible for answering the questions. The DP, of course, cannot reveal more than what he knows. Does he need to know more than what he actually knows? I don't think that there is any such obligation. Cast by Section 89 as well. So once again, I would say quickly, while the requirement affects every company, therefore every company needs to be watching this video and probably trying to understand what this means. Have I been able to help you to understand what it means? Perhaps not. Unfortunately not. I can probably therefore pass on my lack of understanding rather than understanding. That's all I could have done. However, this is a new rule. It applies to all companies. If you don't do what happens, nothing happens except that every director shall then be deemed to be a designated person. And remember, a similar requirement has been added in case of LLPs as well by notification of the same date. So 27th October was quite a busy day for the MCA. There are several notifications of this date. We have discussed some of them already in a couple of videos. I'm intending to discuss at least one more dealing with share warrants. But as far as LLPs are concerned, the same requirement applies uh, to LLPs as well. So that's where we are in terms of this video. Thank you very much for watching this and stay tuned for at least one more video today on share warrants. If there are more occasion to discuss the changes, we will be happy to come back. Thank you very much.